Yo, Yo, what's up everybody? Good morning and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, we're Peter and Yen, travel vloggers from New Zealand. It's super bright and early today and we're at our local train station. Mm -hmm. uh, Carpenedo. <laughs> and we're about to head over to a super exciting place, yes, Venice. Venice. <laughs> it's only about a 20 minute train ride away. We've already got our tickets, so can't wait. Let's get on out of here. <laughs> Here we go, Yin and I are about to have our first look at Venice. Wow. Oh my gosh, look at that, that is awesome. It's so cool, straight out of the station, and that's your view. Woo. Wow. We're on a bit of a mission this morning. We're headed over to the Teatro La Fenice, but it's a 9.30 booking and it's a 20 minute walk from that train station. So it's difficult because there's so much beautiful stuff that we really got to go make that booking. Get your hustle on. <laughs> quickly found out that you can't actually just cross the water path so easily like our Google expects you to. You actually have to find the Rialto Bridge to cross into the main area where the opera house is. So that's what we're heading to right now. It's a bit of a detour, so. But our friend Kirsch is helping us to navigate as well while we're vlogging. <laughs> Made it to Rialto Bridge. Beautiful. Somehow Kusha has led us all the way to the theatre. We have arrived. Amazing. <laughs> there are so many alleyways and twists and turns. And I feel like we covered a lot of this area just getting to here. We're going to go look at this opera theatre and see the inside. Looking forward to it. is absolutely amazing. I thought that it would be cool just from looking at the pictures before we came, but once you get inside, you're actually blown away. Yeah. It's not like Ian and I go to opera houses all the time, but this one is particularly grand, especially with all the gold adorning all the walls. Yes, the ceilings, all the chandeliers, it's so extravagant. Yeah, and then when we look back from when we were up like near the stage, we were like, whoa, look at that room, which is the grow box. Yeah. yeah, and that was absolutely amazing. We were actually really lucky to be able to go inside there as well because I thought it would be closed off but that was really cool to see. <laughs> if you're coming here you do have to book in advance but we got our tickets through Get Your Guide. They cost us about 20 New Zealand dollars each and also once you get here there's different time slots that you have to choose from so the reason why we were in a bit of a rush this morning is the only time slot available for us was the 9.30 a.m. one. Yeah. Thanks again to Kirsch for navigating us here <laughs> because we had to wind through all the narrow streets to get here. We sure did. Such a mission. Yeah. <laughs> you actually get audio guides, which gives you a lot of very good information. This place was first built in 1792 as a replacement for the burnt down San Benedetto Theatre. And it burnt down again in 1836 and again in 1996. So from the theatre name La Fenice, which actually means the Phoenix, it's such a suitable name if you think about it. Because yeah. each time it's burnt down, it's risen again from the ashes and it's still such a majestic, beautiful place. It really is. Amazing. I'm so glad we came here. Yeah, and we managed to beat crowds as well <laughs> because we're here during Easter and it is going to be super, super busy. Yeah, so we have leisurely explored this place in our own pace now and I'm very, very excited to get outside and see what else we see. For the rest of the day, <laughs> hey.
So there is a specific reason why I chose our accommodation to be outside of the main Venice town center. So I was doing a little bit of reading and I read, even though it's awesome to be in the heart of all this, it's very inconvenient in terms of logistics because you have to carry your suitcase through all these like stairwells and bridges and things before you get to your actual accommodation unless you get the exact water ferry to your place and that also requires quite a bit of forward planning as well so it is possible but there's lots of difficulties so that's why we stayed a little bit more further outside and just decided to uh, catch the train into the main town center instead and just walk around much more convenient. Yeah, it's definitely a good idea. We stumbled upon a nice store that was selling smoothies and we just wanted to boost up that immune system that we've got. And we were like all taking a guess because we've heard how expensive things here in Venice could be. So we were like guessing how much were these smoothies. There was some very, there were some very wild guesses being thrown out, but it's very reasonable here. It was 450 euro. I'm also going to get a cappuccino, but I've got a big five. What was it? And it tastes delicious. Pineapple and kiwi fruit. Mm, yum. yum. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's also so many yummy gelatos there. Oh. And Peter never drinks cappuccino, but he's going to have it because we're in Italy. Yeah. And it's before 12, so it's okay. Got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that's a cultural norm here in Italy is that you don't drink milk coffees after breakfast. And we checked the time, it still seemed reasonably okay. <laughs> and I've gotten a very milky coffee here, it's a cappuccino. I can't handle an espresso unless I don't want to sleep for the next couple of days because this is stir really right? cannot handle coffees, but gotta have one here. Yes. Ooh, that is delicious. <laughs> Good. Nice. 160 euro, not too bad price as well, so yeah. very happy with that. And by we found the, the water, perfect spot here by the water. And the grass, lovely. What a vibe. especially in my older age, is Shakespeare. And two of them are set right here in Venice. Of course, you've got The Merchant of Venice about a man named Sherlock and his difficulties, but you've also got the Orson Welles adaptation of Othello. And that's one of the shooting locations right behind me, those snail-like steps right there. And we're about to climb that. The ticket prices cost us eight euro each, and we have a lot of time slots, so we can only scan in at 1.30, which is coming up very soon. And it's in half hour session. Yeah. Look how nice it is up here. is Venetian for shell of the snail and it definitely looks like it when you're at the bottom looking up at the spiraling staircase it's very beautiful and quite charming we've got amazing views up here we can see the bell tower which we'll be going to later this evening and there's also the crooked bell tower over on the other side the staircase itself is about 28 meters high so roughly 90 feet and it was built in the very end of the 15th century I found our past the spot. You can see the man over there. Dal Moros. But check out the line, man. It's crazy. It snakes all the way along here. So this isn't even the end of the line yet. We're going to come back down here some more as well. After 
Yen and Kershaw are somewhere back over here. Here they are. Hello, hello, hello. Oh my goodness, it is a very long line. I don't know how long it's going to take though. So I'm not sure if we'll wait or if we should look for someone else to eat. <laughs> Made it out. How long did that take us, you reckon? I'm gonna say maybe 20 minutes maximum. Like once we got to the front, the food came out super fast. They really are pasta to go. And apparently the first and original one. So now there are designated areas where we're allowed to eat, and if you don't, you could get fined. So the nice guy at the counter was telling us it was down here, turn left and turn right. Alright. Let's try to find that now. I've got the Venezania, I think is what it was called. <laughs> it was number seven on the menu and it looked like it has squid ink sauce in it as well as some very spaghetti looking. Ooh, they're very thick. Almost like udon. Extremely rich. I love that we've got gondolas coming behind us too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Peter eating. <laughs> mm. It's cheesy, seafoody. The texture of the um, pasta is particularly nice. It's got a real firm bite to it. I got the Romana, but unfortunately it was supposed to have uh, mushrooms. I had added mushrooms. I don't see them in here anywhere. I'm hunting around. <laughs> Has some ham, bacon bits, but don't see it. We've also got some Parmigiano too, though. At least that's in there. <laughs> Let's have a try. Mm. See what Peter means about that nice firm bite to the pasta, it is really good. But yeah, definitely a good tip to know about that whole no eating in uh, certain areas, especially not on the bridges either, and that you've got to look for these designated areas. I guess it's probably where there's restaurants too, it's probably a good indication. But I love this spot with all the gondolas that's passing us by. <laughs> What a square this is, huh? Yes, we've stumbled our way over to St. Mark's Square and it is so grand. Like the scale of it, once you're actually here, it's massive. And it's amazing being able to see the basilica over there and all its glory looking absolutely beautiful. And unfortunately, there's a bunch of like stuff that's blocking it. There's a bit of a construction thing in the middle, a couple of stands and all that. But still, absolutely beautiful being able to see it in person. It is also super packed. It might not look like it on the video because it's such a big space and there's like people everywhere but when we first reach that area on that side we're like oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> so many people. people. Definitely. That's super cool. We'll come back here later in the evening because we're going to go up that bell tower. Yeah, yeah that's meant to be the tallest structure in Venice Isn't I believe. Cool. Yeah. So I think we're going to get a great view up there. You can see it right behind you and it doesn't even fit into the frame. <laughs> Giant! So behind me over there is another really famous site here in Venice and that's the Bridge of Sighs. So in the past, when prisoners were tried in Venice, they were kept in an underground chamber in the Doge's Palace, but as the number of prisoners grew, they had to build a bridge that goes across to a new prison and they would shuttle the prisoners in that bridge over there. And it's called the Bridge of Sighs because you can imagine the collective size of the prisoners as they see their last glimpses of freedom through that little tiny window gaps over there. And sometimes they might see like a gondola passing by. So yes, that's the history of this place and why it is so packed and everyone wants a picture here. <laughs> Look how many people there are. <laughs> Very busy.
Yeah, in Venice there is this bookstore that we wanted to check out. It's a very small store and you've got to stay single while and keep on constantly moving. They've also got a staircase that's made of books. Look at this staircase of books. Hey, Bado. We made it to our final activity guys, we're on the top of St. Mark's Bell Tower and it cost us 12 euros which is 2 euro more than the regular line which you do have to wait a long time for so we were able to skip all of that. And that was fantastic. It's really cool coming up here again to see the views. We do have all these grid things but you know you can just stick your hand there and take some <laughs> pictures for unobstructed views. Well guys we're going to wrap our vlog up for the day here. It has been such a full on and long day too. Amazing getting to explore all those streets and alleyways here through Venice. Very, very cool. It does get exceptionally busy in some areas, but then I really do like that there are places where you can still find absolutely quiet little alleys and just enjoy the beautiful views all around. It doesn't stop there. We are going to continue the Venice vlogs in next week for you guys or tomorrow for us. So yeah. make sure you subscribe, <laughs> like this video, leave us a comment. Love to hear from you and we will catch you in the, the next, next one. See you everybody. Bye. Hello. Hello. Hello.